The Cerritos gang encounters psychic minds that turn fantasy and nightmare into reality in Star Trek Lower Decks' third season, third episode, Mining the Mind's Minds. Before I go any further, please note this review may contain spoilers, so if you've not yet seen Lower Decks or its latest episode, this might not be the video for you. Let's warp into this. On the remote planet of Jenga's 4, Mariner, Boimler and Rutherford team up with a rival group of ensigns when a field of minds capable of turning fantasy into reality takes a nightmarish turn. Meanwhile, back on the Cerritos, Tendi's senior science officer training gets off to a rocky start as she finds herself caught in an unexpected diplomatic squabble. The annoyingly alliterative Mining the Mind's Minds is another perfectly entertaining episode, however it does suffer from a number of issues that holds it back from fulfilling the potential of its promising premise. While the comedy's pretty lacking this week, more on that in a bit, the show does continue to entertain with its tongue-in-cheek deconstruction and exploration of long-standing franchise tropes. This week's focus is Trek's never-ending problem with non-Starfleet science personnel, who almost always fall foul of the lifeforms on their seemingly lifeless worlds. The scientists of Jenga's 4 perfectly fit the mould of moody researchers with anti-Starfleet sentiments, something we've seen plenty of times before, most notably with the doomed crew of Regular One as seen in The Wrath of Khan, and also the team who, quite like this lot, also discovered a life form on their previously fought, uninhabited world in TNG's first season episode, Home Soil. It's a fun but pretty light examination, and much like the hood solving the mystery of the planet, i.e. the most interesting bit off-screen, is nicely in keeping with the show's often humorous core premise. On the planet's surface, the glowing green orb-like minds the episode derives its name from feels inspired by classic Trek episodes like the original series' Shore Leave, as well as Deep Space Nine's If Wishes Were Horses, although it could be argued this episode takes the idea to a whole new level of wacky, which is to be expected, I guess. Episode writer Brian Bradley clearly had a lot of fun with the concept, giving us an array of visual madness such as clown Klingons with bat lefts for arms, an assimilated snake, the return of Ku Culkin, last seen way back in the animated series, which is a wonderful deep cut, and even a raisin monster, for some reason. This might all sound pretty hilarious on paper, and if you're someone who found this amusing, then great! Comedy, after all, is perhaps the most subjective of arts, however, none of this really worked for me, serving instead as the latest reminder of the show's long struggle to actually be an effective comedy. Perhaps the more glaring example of this episode's humour problem lies in the appearance of Dr. Leia Brahms. It stands to reason that Rutherford would be aware of Brahms, idolising the Doctor in keeping with his character's nerdy traits. That alone would be funny. But the awareness of Brahms as Geordie LaForge's holographic dream girl, something we witnessed rather painfully in TNG's episodes Booby Trap and Galaxy's Child, is a joke that seemingly breaks the wall, something that we, the audience, would surely only be aware of. References to stuff that we know are only going to get you so far, and the show's relentless attempts to have mere knowledge be the punchline is starting to feel tedious and lazy. I'd much rather the show work harder to derive humour from its actual story, an opportunity this episode disappointingly squanders, rather than just name drop something every five minutes. Whilst failing to satisfy as a comedic vehicle, the episode did atone to a degree with some decent and always welcome character exploration. Mariner's Jennifer reveal was a surprising development, one which offers plenty of scope for the addition of an intriguing rom-com dynamic, which could be gold for the show in the long run. Tendi's arc, while drowned out somewhat by a rather obnoxious and unfunny shouting match over a rock, also yielded some promising results, teasing a mentorship with Ta'ana, the foul-mouthed Cation chief medical officer, whose days as the show's least explored character may finally be nearing an end. Hurrah! I also enjoyed the crew's interaction with their Carlsbad counterparts, with the concept of communication and competition forming the episode's primary conflict, that itself being a trope used plenty of times in Trek, as well as being a pretty classic sitcom staple. The plot was pretty brief, rushed to make room for the far less interesting stuff happening on the Cerritos, but it did give us some fun moments, such as poking fun at Trek's endless array of secret doors in caves. Mariner's heating of rocks was a nice callback to Sulu's life-saving trick seen in the original series' early episode, The Enemy Within, and, with probably my favourite wink of the week, Ensign Core D being the first appearance of the easily infuriated Zaldan since their introduction over 30 years ago in TNG's 
Mind's first season episode, Coming of Age. Minding the Mind's Minds is a collection of mostly fun concepts and references that ultimately, and unfortunately, fails to coalesce into something quite to the level of quality we've come to expect from Lower Decks. It's still a perfectly entertaining 25 minutes that I'm sure many fans will enjoy, but for me this comedy light effort is easily the weakest episode the show has aired to date. I'm giving Mining the Minds Minds 2.5 stars out of 5. But what did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comments below and please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming soon. Until next time, I'm the Trek Lad, live long and prosper.